Hi guys and welcome back. Very often in our programs we'll be dealing with numbers, but almost as often, if not more, we will want to deal with text. The user will be giving us some text that we want to interact with, we will be doing some processing on it, we will be wanting to print some text out to the screen, and that is where the next data type comes in. In Python, we've got another type called strings that are used to contain text, like characters, symbols, numbers, or anything else we want. Here's our first string that I'm going to call my string, and it contains the value hello world. So a couple of things about this string is that it is surrounded by double quotation marks. You can also use single quotation marks if you like, but it's important that the start and the end quotation mark match, so they have to be the same. You can't mix and match them. So this here would be invalid because the start quote and the end quote are different. I like using double quotation marks, but that's just me. You can use whichever one you like. This string here contains the characters H, E, L, L, and so on, including the comma and the space and the exclamation mark. When Python looks at this string, it knows nothing about it. It doesn't care what its contents are. It doesn't have any meaning like the number 30 does because you can do maths on it, for example. A string doesn't have any intrinsic meaning for Python all it's used for is to carry these characters. For example, you can use it to print some information out to the user, like hello world. If you wanted to print that out, you can store it inside a string and then print it. As an aside, remember you can always use the value itself instead of a variable inside the print function here if you prefer. Sometimes you'll want to use one quotation mark or the other depending on the contents of the string. So if you've got a string with quotes, then you'll want to use the double quotes, such as hello, it's me. Here you definitely want to use the double quotation marks on the outside because you've got a single quotation mark on the inside. If you were to use single quotation marks throughout, then this part here is not included in the string because the string ends here. If you run this, you'll get an error. Similarly, you may want to use the single quotation marks on the outside and the double quotation marks on the inside in some occasions. For example, if you have something like this. Here we've got a string, and inside the string we've got a bunch of characters. Once Python realizes that you're dealing with a string, you can put whatever you want inside it. And in this case, we are putting the quotation marks inside it. He said, and then open quotes, you were amazing yesterday. This is totally fine because these quotation marks here don't signal another string to Python. They are just a character inside the string. Finally, if you really want it to always use the same quotation marks, you can do. So I'm going to turn this into a double quotation mark string. And now you can see that these things here are not part of the string. They are colored differently. However, if you put a backslash in front of these quotes, Python will no longer treat them as characters used to signal a string. Now they are part of the string itself. I highly discourage you from doing this, but you may see it every now and then in code. So I wanted to tell you what it means. When you do this, this is called escaping. And it's quite a common thing to do in some occasions. But when you're dealing with strings like this, I would always recommend that you invert the quotes. We also have multi-line strings for when we want to print something out that's much longer. So we will have something like a multi-line variable. And here we are going to use three quotation marks. And then we can print whatever we want inside it. If we print this out and we run it, you'll see that we get multiple lines printed out. So we've got the hello world, then we've got an empty line, then we've got my name is Jose, welcome to my program, and then we've got another empty line as well. Multi-line strings are very useful when you have much longer pieces of text that you want to print out. And also, they can be useful at times as comments. Earlier on in the course, we saw that a comment is signaled with a hash symbol. So you can write something here to tell yourself what this file is about. But similarly, sometimes you have a longer comment. You want to write multiple lines of notes. And for that, it is quite common to use one of these multi-line strings. So why is this? Why can you do this? Well, what this does in Python is it creates the string and then that's it. 
You don't assign it to a variable. You don't use it anywhere. This is totally fine to do in Python. And we can use a multi-line string like this that doesn't have any usefulness inside the program to leave a comment for ourselves for later on. So often you'll be seeing multi-line strings like this in my files with explanations about what things are. Just one more thing, you can add strings together. So if you've got a name such as Jose and a greeting, you can add it to name and then we will end up with hello comma space Jose. So when you add two strings together, they are joined and make up one final string. So I will print out this greeting here and run the file and you'll see that we get hello Jose. If you do age is 34 and then you try to add this to a string, like here, you are plus 34, you will get an error because in Python you cannot add integers and strings together. You must convert this to a string first before you can add them together. Fortunately, converting to a string is very straightforward. You can either add the quotation marks around it or you can do str and pass in age. What this does is it takes in the number 34, you give it to this str function, which has these brackets around it to accept a value. So you're giving the age value to str and what you get back is a string with this content inside it. So then you can still run this because age as str is a string that you've converted. We will be learning more about converting data from one type to another as we move through the course and it's a very common. In this lecture we're going to look at string formatting. In the last video we saw how you cannot add numbers and strings together but that is such a common thing to do that all too often we end up having to convert the number into a string so that we can add it to the string and so on. Something like this which we had in the last video, we've got a number, then we wanna put it inside the string so that we can show it to the user and we have to convert it into a string first. This is quite annoying because it happens so often. So instead we can use string formatting. So what I'm going to do is instead of printing UR plus the age, we're gonna print F string. Now an F string is only something available in Python 3.6 and above. So make sure that you are using that version. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, it will work in REPL8. And here we're going to do UR, and then inside a couple of curly braces, we're going to type age. Now we can delete this one here, and we can also delete this one there. And we can directly print the number 34 inside our string because of the way that F strings work. So in an F string, you type an F, then the quotation marks and then inside the quotation marks you can write these curly braces and inside the curly brace you can write your variable that you want to include inside your string. Let's look at another example. Here we've got a name and then you've got a greeting which is an F string. You see the F then the quotation marks and inside it you've got how are you comma space then you've got your curly braces and inside there you've got the name variable and at the end you've got a question mark. If we print this greeting and then we run this you'll see that how are you Jose gets printed out. There is a small problem with F strings which isn't really a problem as much as a limitation which is that if you change the name say to Bob and then you print greeting again you'll see that how are you Jose gets printed out twice. That is because when we calculated this string, the name variable was Jose, and that is what the greeting string contains. The greeting string contains how are you Jose, and even if you change name, the greeting doesn't change. That is why Python has another way of formatting strings, which does allow for the changing of variables. So let's delete this and create a final greeting which is how are you and then just open and closing curly braces without uh, the name variable inside it and notice that this is not an F string. Now we can do another variable that is final greeting dot format 
and pass in the name. So this is a little bit different from what we've been seeing up to now. What this does is it takes in this string here, how are you, comma, curly braces, question mark, and then it's going to run something called format inside it. And format has these brackets at the end, which means it can accept a value, and the value it's accepting is the name. What this does is it takes the name and it replaces the curly braces by the value. So if we print Jose greeting, then you'll see the same thing as before. How are you, Jose? But now you can do something like Bob greeting and make it equal to final greeting dot format of the name Bob, and then we can print that out. So as you can see, if we change the name to Bob, then this line actually looks exactly the same as the one above, but the name is changing. So what we've got here is essentially a template for a greeting, and we can then replace the values into it later on if we want. Inside final greeting here, you can also put name if you want, but because it's not an F string, Python isn't going to try to put your variable inside the string. You must do it yourself. But if you put this in there, what you have to do is final greeting dot format and now say name equal Jose. So what this does in Python is Python will know to look for the name thing inside curly braces and replace it by Jose. So this is a very important part of how Python works and we'll be looking at it in great detail as we go along. But the first part before the equal, Python will know that is this thing here. And the second part is what you want to put there instead. Now here comes the confusing part, which is that you have a variable called name. So really you can do name equal name. But these two refer to two completely different things. The first one, Python knows you refer to this thing here inside your greeting. And the second one after the equal, Python knows that you refer to your variable. Don't feel like you have to use this all the time, but it is there and you can use it if you want. One of the key benefits of doing something like this is that the template is now much more readable because it is obvious that you are going to print how are you and then somebody's name. In addition, it of course works if you change this variable name. Name, which is still being used inside the string, is now equal to friend underscore name, which is our variable. So this still works in the same way. Let's revert to that. And now remember that name is going to be replacing just the curly braces because we don't have anything inside them, which is when we need to say name equals something. Instead of creating a variable called Jose greeting, you can actually just put this inside the print function, and that is totally fine as well. It's a little bit more confusing maybe, but it works in the same way. Usually you will be using F strings in Python just because they are shorter, they're more readable. You don't have to type like dot format and then brackets and then pass in things there. So F strings are the weapon of choice. But sometimes when you want to reuse a template, using format comes in handy. But that's it for this video. Hopefully I haven't confused you too much. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.